We're gonna go right into the next session. I again am sorry that I had that technical issue and left you hanging with some dead air. That's my least favorite thing to do at these events. But we're going straight into John from Segments. John, how's it going? Doing great. Hey, Derek. Hey, thanks for joining us. I know it's really late slash early for you. <laughs> it's tough to say because I've got you here in the middle of the night, but uh, for, yeah. for your time. But um, I'm just going to let you take it away. I th we've covered so many things from predictive personalization and, and other AI-powered tools. And now we're going to get it deep into the analytics. I'm really looking forward to, to getting into even more nerdy math stuff with you. <laughs> All right. So do I go ahead and press share? Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. I'll bring it on right All here. Right. OK, um, share screen. Yeah. Come to tab. OK. Here it comes. There we are. If you want to make it full screen. OK. Perfect. Awesome. And I'm going to hide myself and let you take it away. OK. All right. Hey guys, I'm John Chow. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Trussell and uh, our product segment um, is machine learning segmentation um, to help you turbocharge your email marketing, right? We have a lot of uh, pre-built segmentation and deep customer insights to help you analyze your data um, and make uh, data-driven marketing easier. So today I wanted to talk about a couple of things, right? As a quick intro, um, why segmentation is important uh, and then what exactly, what do I mean by like turbocharging, uh, you know, email marketing. And so um, again, I'm John, uh, I've been doing data science for about uh, 16 years now. Um, after graduating from Stanford with my statistics masters, I worked in the Silicon Valley Bay area for a demand forecasting company. Uh, it's a SaaS company. Uh, we helped Fortune 100 companies like Walmart, uh, Target, Best Buy, uh, PepsiCo. Um, understand the relationship between their prices and their products and the and the promotion effectiveness, right? Doing uh, forecasting to uh, predict how much uh, item they're going to move, how much volume they will move at different prices, uh, as well as just like which products are uh, affinity, uh, they 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 lift each other up, and which products are uh, actually cannibalistic. So I uh, spent a, a ton of time there, um, and then I joined a marketing agency. Uh, in San Francisco, uh, doing a lot of social media uh, predictions. So we were building uh, predictive like box up um, predictive models to predict DVD sales and box office using Facebook likes and Twitter shares and also did a lot of uh, customer segmentation there. Uh, before I started uh, Trestle, I was at LinkedIn. I was a senior manager there for data science, uh, building machine learning models uh, for user targeting uh, and increasing conversions for our sales marketing team by like over 20%. And while I was at LinkedIn, uh, what I realized is that, um, you know, obviously data is very powerful and very transformational, helps a ton of, biz ton of uh, business value, but 90% of the world um, really don't ac have access to the, the, the type of technology that we, we had uh, at these uh, high-tech companies, right? Um, I'll give you an example, right? Before I left, our data team at LinkedIn uh, had like 800 people in it, right? 99% um, of the world uh, probably does not have an 800 person data team, right? Nor should they have that, right? So um, it, it just got to me where like, I, I thought that data is so powerful, but a lot of people don't actually have access um, to the type of technology that large retail and um, you know, high tech is able to enjoy because of their scale. And so how do we make that possible, right? Like I really wanted to uh, help every e-commerce e brand, brand to be able to thrive with data. And so by making Sort of these type of enterprise analytics, uh, enterprise grade analytics and tech uh, available for uh, you know the to entrepreneurs, right? The Shopify uh, crowd, everybody who's um, hack doing things on their own, figuring things out, uh, and able to scale and move uh, their business forward uh, by really under making this interface between people and data more human and compassionate. And I'd like to maybe go through a few examples uh, what I mean uh, later on. Okay, so why segmentation, right? I think this is this is, is uh, I love to talk about this as uh, it's been a couple of years, but continues to be true, which is that ninety six percent of marketers agree that doing segmentation increases CTR, uh, click through rate, uh, and precision of the you know the 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 your, your targeting and personalization. So, um, why? Right? It, it, it's 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 pretty simple, right? It's like when you can niche down and figure out which who 
you know, like say twenty percent of your customers are probably open email a lot more uh, probably uh, than than your your other customers, right? Like we've done this so many times that it's like drinking water for us. Like we 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 just look at uh, your your active loyal customers, and we can prove time and time again that those those people are probably spending like uh, three to five times like an average. Uh, uh, you know, order value and, and revenue per person. Um, and they're opening emails at a much higher click, usually like 20, 40%, 50%, sometimes 100% higher than your average customer. And so when we can prove those values um, by creating segmentation, like um, in front of our customers, they go, wow, like I never think of things this way. And, you know, we have a lot of really great tools uh, that people leverage in Shopify with in terms of email marketing platforms. You know, such as like you know, Aclavio, um, you know, Active Campaign, they're really awesome at, at, at giving you the, the 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 triggers to segment your customers uh, and they help you build some flows. But what it doesn't do is doesn't help you try to un- explore the entire uh, space of what is possible, right? Like uncovering uh, the revenue opportunities um, using machine learning. That's where we come in, and we can help you do um, a lot more um, sort of precision, precise lifecycle, or in terms of like. Um, product replenishment type of uh, segmentations. So again, my question to, to the crowd is usually is like, what kind of segmentation uh, strategies have you tried? And we hear a lot from, from customers saying like, oh, we know we try to do like demographics. Uh, we try to do like, you know, age or gender, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we try to do region. Um, the, 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 Data has evolved so much, right? That like the we in the sort of the digital customer journey along with it is that the traditional sort of demographics way is is sort of less effective uh, because you can actually get really niche down in terms of which customers are buying, um, what is the context of their you know browsing behavior, shopping behavior, what does based on the stuff that they 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 shop with you. Um, it's actually more effective. We've actually been able to see this with data that it's, it's actually much more effective to have those type of segmentation strategies like, um, you know, life cycle with, with RFM, you know, and then based on product purchases, based on their spend and recency of their purchases, um, you can actually have, see better lift. So sort of, I mean, not to say like the demographics, um, you know, uh, isn't important or effective, but we have actually more data with Shopify. You can actually do a, a lot a lot better targeting, a lot more precise targeting uh, using the data that you have already be- between your Shopify and your email platforms. Um, we had, um, we were really fortunate to be mentioned twice uh, in Shopify Plus marketing materials uh, last year. So we were in the future of e-commerce um, in trend five with terms of retention and increasing repeat sales. Um, this is like a no brainer to me. Um, Ads always will become, you know, always become pricier every year, right? Like last year, I remember in the summer, um, you know, in the beginning when COVID hit, people were like, wait, wait, you know, like, I'm not sure. But then they're like, oh, well, actually, April and May was like really big uh, for a lot of a lot of stores. And then the the, 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 the Facebook ad costs like tripled, you know, in, in a couple of months in, in the summer there. And people were like, wait, should I continue or not? Because I don't think I'm profitable, um, not getting the same role as, as I am. And, and that's, I like to think that large, largely because you have really large retail jumping into the fray, right? Like there's just um, all the offline stuff they used to do, they cannot do. So they move all that budget online and they suck the air out of the room, right? Like everybody's bidding on the same set of customers. And, you know, when you have a really large brand outspending um, and, and, you know, moving that entire uh, budget online, you're going to see like cost go, go up, right? Go through. And that that's just not something that we will uh, see reverse reverse of trend, right? Like I don't think uh, every son, all of a sudden everybody will be, um, you know, going back uh, and, 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 and rushing to the malls um, anytime soon, right? And so I think e-commerce has definitively like changed in 2020 because of COVID, because the, the how how powerful, uh, you know, how much uh, the 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 lay majority, sort of the belly of the curve in terms of technology adoption, has seen e-commerce. So that I think will continue to be really important. To how do you be smart about where you're spending and making sure you're optimizing um, your spend using more targeted uh, approach using the data. Um, again, th- this part we mentioned briefly about the customer journey, and so um, when you try to picture 
uh, you know, Google Insight actually has this. Um, they talk about the number of digital touch points that people go through, right? Like they say, like, oh, we're buying a lollipop, you're probably going through somewhere between 10 to 50 touch points. If you're shopping for a plane ticket, you're probably going through about 500 to 1,000 digital touch points at different times, right? And on different, um, could be different websites, email, could be different uh, promos, um, help, help tickets, uh, calls, messengers. It's just, just, there's just so much, right? It's your understanding that the, the customer journey becomes almost impossible for any human to grasp just because uh, there's like a 10 digital, 10 dimensional space uh, that people, you know, traverse through. And so, I think the only way to cut through that noise is is using data to un analyze what are the successful paths that people take and which ones are effective um, for different customers. Understanding when people are likely to purchase, um, you know, using the purchase timing, uh, and then looking at the the successful paths of conversions that people buy from this product to the next product to the next product, uh, and really baking that in into your strategy across your different marketing channels, I think is is the way for to build long lasting relationships um, for your brand. Okay, so uh, onto like sort of the the the, the more uh, meaty parts of the, the deck, we want to go through a couple of examples here. Um, we really think of ourselves as the intelligence layer sitting between your Shopify data and your marketing um, channels, right? And so what I mean by that is, um, Shopify has a, a ton of information in their data API that's already captured first party for your store. It's just sitting there. Uh, a lot of times it goes unused. And with our intelligence, we can actually um, load that in and prepare the data and use machine learning to find, find pat interesting patterns um, across like customers, orders, and products that can then lead to a, a lift of your ROI in terms of your marketing channels. And um, a lot of our customers actually use uh, use use Clavio, and so when people ask like, "What is the difference?" and I, I basically say that like, it's a great marketing platform. You can e target your emails and uh, schedule those emails flows, but um, it doesn't try to give you the the holistic space, the unbiased uh, intelligence and analytics based on your store data and making those recommendations, those tweaks. Um, we kind of fill that need. And, and that's why it, it basically turbocharge uh, some of the email marketing because they can use much precise timings. They can understand which segments exist uh, that is pre-built by us out of the box uh, using machine learning and then really niche down and increase conversions. <clears throat> okay, uh, so like uh, what I wanted to share really three things today is number one is understanding the purchase timing based on the customer lifecycle journey that they're on. Are they a one-time customer? Are they a two-time customer? Uh, or are they are new, new signups? Uh, we can actually use that data to actually show you exactly when people are purchasing. This is super, super critical. Second thing is churn prevention. It's like when you understand when people are buying and when they're, they're likely to leave, um, it turns out people forget about almost all brands at roughly the same rate. Like we see this across like hundreds of millions of orders, uh, you know, thousands of brands we see very similar patterns emerge um, in terms of when people churn. Obviously some variations between like, you know, food and bath versus like a fashion store. Um, but it's like strikingly similar, like how people go through the purchase cycle and when people forget about you. And so this is like, I think it's just, uh, it's just a part of human nature. Um, and when you need to target, uh, you need to really learn the data uh, to do it. The third thing is the customer CLV, right? So um, customer lifetime value is such a uh, elusive metric. A lot of people all the time are asking questions like, well, how do you calculate customer lifetime value? So we actually have customer lifetime value calculated as a two-year forward-looking uh, predictive value in available to you um, immediately and at every single custom level. And so that really helps, find, help you, helps brands find the best customers and then be able to target focus more of their energy on the, the, the revenue generating segment versus the people who are sort of like one and done or people who are uh, not spending any money with you, right? So using that, uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit with uh, in terms of acquisition and retention. All right, so the first thing is like uh, car abandonment, right? Like I'm huge, huge topic, um, but this one, we really, uh, we did something really uh, cool with uh, one of our brands. Um, and I wanna share with you in this case study, which is just, by learning when people are like abandoning their cards in terms of the, the purchase timing really has uh, makes a huge difference in terms of um, 
uh, you, the conversion rate on your like okay, abandoned, abandoned car recoveries, right? Uh, it turns out like about 87% of the customers uh, actually have like dropped the car within the first hour, right? And so when we actually look at the data, and so this is just the mock data for 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 um, a, a demo store, but we actually saw that out of everybody who who who, who purchased right for their uh, the time their first order happens typically within the first hour is like around 87, 80 per 80 percent, and so and then they drop off significantly in the second hour and then the third and then they're pretty much gone, and so um, when we shared this data with um, one of our brands, um, he immediately uh, took, he's like, wow, this is like a gold, right? So he immediately went back to change uh, his um, abandoned cart flow because he would use, he used to do the default and the default used to be four hours. And so he was like, oh, okay, I'm clearly waiting way too long here, right? And so he actually went Blitzkrieg in the first hour. What he did, um, you know, obviously depending on the store, but he did a couple of things. So the first thing is he changed email timings, right? Like he was uh, sending, uh, over four hours to send the first abandoned cart, he's, he 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 dropped that down to like about fifteen minutes, and he sent us a second follow up within like about one to two hours. Also, he added um, an SMS uh, um, uh, message delivery, and then he ad added a push, right? So uh, with those three things combined, right, like he was able to get like a fifty one percent open rate, eleven uh, percent click through rate, and ten percent conversion on his abandoned cart flows. And uh, you know the typical sort of good benchmarks for conversion is around two point eight nine percent. So he like literally crushed that metric uh, just by fixing uh, like something super simple, just based on the data on, on when people are converting. Um, and this is one the, the, his quote, right? He basically was saying like, when you can replace the guessing with science, right? You will make more money. And and, and that's just like it. I'm so happy to see that because I'm I'm, I'm like a math nerd, and so I, I really believe this. Um, so it's very, really, um, really exciting to hear that from a, coming from a marketer. A second thing I wanted to share is around churn prevention, right? So we talked so much about like life cycle and purchase timing. Uh, I really wanted to show you this, but like the, the data that we see is going from one time to a second time purchase, the probability of them buying the second one just skyrockets, right? Like we've done this across so many stores um, is that like, you know, if if on average if the one timer is able to, uh, to 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 buy the second time is that's thirty percent. The probability of that the second time person will buy the third time is like usually double that, like about sixty percent. And so it's it's much much more likely um, that they will stay with you a longer period of time if you can get them to the second purchase in a third purchase, right? Not to mention probability. So how do we do this? Um, so Elia Beauty actually wanted to better understand the custom repurchase patterns. Um, specifically around reordering the same product and returning the shop again. And so, um, again, uh, mock data here, but the the what we can see this pattern is very consistent. Is that we see usually a large spike. Uh, it's kind of like a playground, kind of like a slide. <laughs> That's what I like to describe the shape. But we usually see a ramp up to a huge spike around week two and week three. Most of the repurchases happen, uh, and then it drops down to um, sort of this like uh, you know flattened out area in the middle. For about six, like eight to ten weeks, uh, and then they largely go away after that. And so um, we call this the first. The beginning is the active period, where we typically see about thirty-five percent of the orders actually happening within this time frame. And then the at-risk period is about fifty percent, and then there's maybe like ten to fifteen percent at the churn period. And so um, what this is is like most most when I show this that data to most people, they're like, oh wow, so like I really need to like target uh the peak and then the sliding uh differently and then the churn right so like that's i was like yes exactly right so like this is life cycle journey uh you're understanding when people are purchasing uh, and you want to use different strategies when they're when they're still like with you very actively engaged with opening emails buying stuff versus when they're like attention starts to wane and they're dropping off uh and then versus when they've completely churned you gotta try different things to try to win them back and so really using this to, to anchor uh, your your post pushers flows, your nurturing flows um, can have really big significant impact uh, in terms of conversions. Uh, and so, like uh, what Ilya Beauty did, um, I think um, uh, is is super advanced. Is what they did is like based on every single product line, right? And they actually went back and 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 pushed us to, to find the data for the replenishment times across different product lines. And so they actually have like a multi-branched approach where, you know, like now that people have purchased, but if they bought, um, you know, for example, the, the the lipstick or the mascara or the blush or, 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 or tint, um, uh, they can actually 
have a different timing uh, for every single product, right? Like when people are coming back and purchase. And so they use um, very specific uh, line skew combinations of replenishment times to optimize um, down further. And they saw like incredible lifts um, after they were able to do that, right? So um, 50X RI on just the segments uh, within about 60 days of implementing some of these strategies. <clears throat> And so uh, again, the, the quote from, from Albert, um, um, who's the uh, uh, VP of like uh, commerce data there is that they've always known like anecdotally, it's like, oh, it's probably 100 days, probably 120 days people are coming back and purchasing, right? Based on like our, our own experience, based on the, the agents, um, but like to actually see the data to line up to the expectations and across different lines is, is like so much more valuable, right? Because they can actually do a lot more uh, and very, uh, very precise uh, in terms of like people's uh, replenishment cycles. Again, like I think this is uh, not meant to be a gotcha question, but again, like I really think it's important to do this analysis um, even offline, even use, using data terms to try to analyze when people are buying the same product, um, you, know, you know, and understanding the different cycles. Because if you're in, the chances are you have you know, you you have or want to do some kind of subscriptions these days, um, and you have some products that can be repeated. And so understanding the consumption rate is like super critical. Lastly, I want to talk about um, custom lifetime value. Why is this so important? Um, across the board, like we've done this analysis is like we see the custom lifetime value, um, you know, it's like, the, the, the loyal customer's type lifetime value is so much higher than the people who just bought one time, right? Like up to seven times higher. And so for us, like the, the question always comes back to us is like, well, how do I find more of those customers? Because um, I'm using Facebook, I'm using DPAs, I'm doing lookalikes. Um, and the, the problem, uh, at least up to till now, I mean, I don't know when data data stuff changes, you know, with iOS 15, you know, with, with data uh, from, from Facebook, but what you have, in your Shopify store is already very, very powerful. You have years of history on purchase and shopping patterns and who is valuable. And so far, nobody has that but you. And so we can actually help you stack rank all the customers, right? Like by, by predicting the CLV and finding the best customers and then using that to build uh, new audiences um, with Facebook. And so um, customers who, who look at some of the preview segments is like most likely to buy. We have like active loyals, high spenders, some of those segments, they mesh it together. Uh, then they run a new um, targeted, uh, so the new custom audience and they run new targeted uh, drug product ads on top of that and they see great results, right? This is um, data from, from one of our customers. Um, he was able to do get like on his own, he was able to get like six to eight times the ROAS, right? Which is like, he's like, oh, I thought I was doing fantastic. And then he tried segments, right? And he actually tried some of these strategies uh, using the, the best customers, uh, using that into a new audience. And he was seeing like um, ROAS is like 10X, like 15X. And he, on average, it was somewhere around like 14 to 15 guys. He was like, wow, like I like never would I have, would I have guessed, right? And the the the, but I feel I feel like it's very obvious, right? Like, Painstakingly obvious is that Facebook uses a lot of the pixel, um, and 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 the event data firing, which cookies you know cookies expire as everybody knows, right? So thirty days, ninety days, um, it can be blocked, and so it doesn't have the historical like all the history that you have in your first party data in your store, and so it's not surprising that you know when we can provide Facebook a good signal to start with. They can do a better job finding people that are just like that, um, um, who will likely spend more with your store. Um, again, like this is a quote from. It is actually a review on our store, uh, but he basically talks about. Um, Rich basically talks about how effective um, and what he did with in terms of Facebook uh, and using that to build a, the, the targeting and retar uh, sorry acquisition and retargeting. Okay, so um, really quickly, um, the key takeaways right for. Uh, today is just using purchase timing to really understand the lifecycle journey, um, figuring out your abandoned cart flows. That's something that everybody can do today uh, and then go back and sort of improve your abandoned cart flows. Churn prevention, um, we hate one and dones. Uh, we just spend so much time acquiring a new customer. Uh, if they only buy once and they, they churn, um, 
you know, it hurts profitability. Um, we, a lot of the brands don't make a profit until the second or third purchase. And so how do we get them to the second purchase is so important. Um, so using purchase timing again to, to niche down in terms of understanding who is at risk of churning uh, out of the one-timers uh, and then so on is like super profitable. Third thing is using custom lifetime value to understand who are your best customers. You know, are you proportionally spending more time on your low value customers or actually on your high value customers? Uh, it's something that's, um, you know, strategically can have a huge benefit um, to your ROI. Um, so yeah, so like here's my LinkedIn. Um, I'll just put the screen up there. Um, you know, the QR code is, is basically connected to my LinkedIn and that's the, if you wanted to, if you have any questions, you can email us at team at trussell.co. Um, and we have a, 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 a website, a, sorry, a landing page set up for, for, for e-commerce tech as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. And yes, what th those three like per, uh, things on the last slide, it's like, this seems to be the problem that I think every merchant never really solves or feels like they've solved. <clears throat> so even, even though you, pro you proved so much value there, um, like there's actually one more piece of value, which is being able to sleep at night, knowing that you are sending the emails with the right timing, that you are maximizing the ROI from your ad campaigns and you found your best customers and you really know what you're doing there. Because I think once, once you install segments, you have a lot of power to see that. And it's very reassuring to actually finally use the data that you already have in a way that can, that can really help uh, the business grow and thrive. So thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Yeah, and we have, um, I think we have a special offer um, for, for e-commerce tech. And so like everybody who signs up uh, and mentioned doing onboarding for e-commerce tech uh, will get an, a, an extended trial. So it will be, you get 30 days on your trial uh, and then also a 15 minute call with one of our data scientists who will um, go through your store and provide some, uh, you know, basically uh, tailor-made insights for you. I love it. Uh, having a, a quick call with a data scientist uh, is is a very tough offer to pass up on. Everybody watching, <laughs> check out the trestle.co forward slash e-commerce tech. I shared it, shared it here in chat. We'll add it to the show notes. And John, I'm going to make sure that more people um, get this offer so that we can, we can showcase the, the results of your technology to them. Sounds great. Thanks, Derek. Uh,